Hey there, this is Nick from Income Digs with a video tutorial for any of you out there who are builders, renovators, flippers, new construction, remodeling, flipping houses, developing vacant land. You're probably using QuickBooks Online to manage your expenses and you should, or a combination of that and builder trying to co-construct. But one thing that you absolutely need to be doing is utilizing products and services. This is one of the most underutilized features within QuickBooks Online, and I find it absolutely essential for any business that is doing any kind of building. We're gonna dig in today, I'm gonna to show you how easy this is and how it can really open up your job costing performance and really allow you to see exactly where you're spending your money in really specific categories, all while not interrupting a really nice, neat profit and loss and balance sheet, and that is absolutely key. So what we're gonna talk about uh, is why we need to leverage products and services to augment our reporting. So what it does using products and services, it used to be called items. Another term for it would be cost codes, okay? But products and services is typically how we're gonna see it in QuickBooks Online. It adds an additional dimension to our QuickBooks Online reporting. It's also the optimal link between external software and QuickBooks Online. So for those of you who are considering using Builder Trend or Co-Construct or really any of those outside platforms, they're gonna ask you for cost codes and cost codes link directly to products and services. So we need to be using them in QuickBooks first so that we can link to that external software, all right? Also this historical data makes us way more accurate in estimating our future projects. That's what it's all about when it comes to job costing. We need to know how much we spent on our projects. One, because it might mean we're invoicing our customers based on what we are you know, incurring, right? So the better we are, the more detailed we are at job costing, the more we can get paid. And second, whether you're doing time and materials or you're doing fixed price, job costing allows you to find out where you spent your money so that when you estimate that next project, you're way more accurate. And the only way to do it, in my opinion, is to use products and services. So why categories aren't enough? So if we get into QuickBooks Online, we're gonna look at categories as your chart of accounts, right? And we're all used to that, I'm gonna show you that. We don't wanna list our giant list of categories as chart of accounts when it comes to renovations. Rough electric, final electric, rough plumbing, rough HVAC, cabinetry. We don't want our profit and loss sheet to be gigantic. It needs to be readable in one to two pages. And we also don't wanna continuously update our chart of accounts or our categories list. So we have these budgets and we're often adding to them, subtracting to them based on the services we offer. We don't wanna continuously go back to our chart of accounts and update that. We want consistency within our chart of accounts, all right? How does this work? I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna demo this all in QuickBooks Online. We're gonna turn on the items table. We're gonna import, we're gonna add our list of products and services. We're gonna map our products and services to our P&L or our balance sheet, probably your P&L, your profit and loss. And then we're gonna use items instead of categories when we add expenses, all right? So if you're ready to do that, let's get into QuickBooks and see how it works. Okay, so the kind of traditional way to create expenses or the way that a lot of people do it is in uh, the chart of accounts. Okay, so in my chart of accounts, I have kind of a, a building business set up here and I have some cost of goods sold for um, flipping, but then I have right here construction materials, subcontractors, wages, internal labor, right? And so we're going to track our expenses to these categories. What I don't want you to do is to list a category for uh, rough plumbing, rough electric, rough HVAC, because I want your profit and loss to be nice and neat. So our chart of account should look something like this, really generic, okay, with not too much detail. That's where we should start. The problem with just stopping there is when we create an expense, let's create an expense for like job materials. So we paid Home Depot. Now I'm gonna put all of these as uh, 2023, or I'm sorry, 2022, even though we are recording this 2023, just to show it on a PL. So category here, I can put construction materials. And I can say that this is for wiring. It's rough electric wiring, okay? And I can say I spent $1,500 on that. And I can put it to a project, okay? So everything kind of works out nicely in that regard, okay? I can do that, I can save and close. Actually, it's $150. I want to make that $1,500 just for fun. Okay, so where does this show up in our p and If I go to my profit and loss as of 2022, we're going to see that show up as construction materials. And again, I'm just bringing this up in 2022 because it's a completely blank set of books, okay? So $1,500 shows up right there in construction materials. Let's create one more.
Do another construction materials is for rough plumbing materials. Let's say I spent 3000 and actually I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do, I'm going to save a new, I'm going to do one more for rough electric just to kind of drive this point home here. So if I do construction materials again, this is for rough electric and this is for like uh, boxes and misc rough electric. And I spent 1250 on that and this was for the same project. Okay, so save and close. Okay, so you can see that my construction materials has gone up. Great, now again, I don't want you to put rough electric, rough, rough plumbing on your P&L here. That's going to be way too much. We're gonna have 30, 40 categories. I don't want you to have that giant list, okay? So here is my total. If I drill down into that, I can see the details of all those transactions. One thing I cannot do, however, is I can't do any kind of sorting or totaling for my rough electric. Now I can see here that I bought some boxes, rough electric. I bought some wiring, rough electric. In my head, I can do some math, but think about having many hundreds of re receipts or 50 at least, right? We're not gonna wanna do that math and there's no way of me separating things out here, okay? I have no way to filter. I have no way to group by. Okay, and the solution to this is products and services. So notice when I created this expense, I only had one place to enter my category, and that's right here. What I'm going to do right now is turn on this additional feature, which gives us that added level of detail. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna to go to my settings, account and settings, and I'm gonna to go to expenses down here. You should be able to do this, I believe, on every version of QuickBooks Online. I'm currently demonstrating QuickBooks Online Plus. In the expenses tab here, this is the magic moment right here. Show items table on expense and purchase forms. I wanna turn that on, yes. Okay, great. We're not gonna talk about markup during this video. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, done. Excellent. So I've turned that on. So what does that do? Now when I go to create an expense, I see this additional section down here called item details where I can select a product or service, description, quantity, rate, etc. okay? So that's excellent. Now I have already created my list of products and services, but I wanna make sure you know where to do that as well. So your products and services list is going to live right here, okay? But you can also get to it from sales. Okay, so if I go to sales, product and services, it's gonna show up here. Now that's because you can also use, and you probably already do use products and services for sales. We can also use it for expenses, okay? So if I scroll down here, actually let me filter this. I've created a sample list of products and services categorized by stage. So I have stage one, general admin and MISC, permits, demo, house secure, general other. I have rough structure, excavation, rough plumbing, rough plumbing subcontract, rough electric, rough electric subcontract. Why do I have different ones there? Because I might have a different chart of accounts. I have materials and then I have subcontractors, okay? So we're gonna add the exact list that we use to budget when we're about to do a project, right? We all budget, right? You all create an estimate. When you create an estimate, you're not just saying, all right, I'm gonna spend $20,000 in materials and $50,000 in subcontractors. You're gonna go through in a list similar to this, not exactly like this, of course not, right? This is just a general list. This is kind of relatively generic. We can get more detailed. I'll show you a list that's more detailed in a second. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna estimate and we're gonna budget at a high level of detail, something like this. And so we want to also be able to track our actuals at that level of detail. And the only way to do that is to have this list in products and services. You can see my list here, I think it's about 40 or 50 long. And the idea of having that on your profit and loss is absolutely crazy. You don't want your profit and loss to be three to four pages. It becomes impossible to read. So if we can have just three or four categories, construction materials, subcontracted services, and labor, and then maybe QuickBooks fees or something, um, those are all our cost of goods sold. We have that on our P&L, and then we can drill down to get that detail. That's the magic. Okay, so once we've added these, and we can add these manually, either by going new, service, and here's the key, when you add it, let's just add you know sample category. And I'm gonna put it in uh, stage one. Here's the key, you have to indicate that you purchase it from a vendor. So I purchase this from a vendor. Don't really worry about the cost, but here's the important part. We need to map it to an expense account. 
And this is where you're going to say whether it's materials or it's subcontractors. You could indicate a preferred vendor if you want. You could even, uh, I think that's it. Okay, now you might sell this as well. In this case, I'm gonna say I don't. I'm just gonna save and close that. And I've just added the sample category. Now this list that I've already added, I imported as well. So you can import your products and services, okay? And if you want a sample import, I provide one online. Uh, you can download for free from my website. So if you'd like this list, you can get it and you can import it, okay? So you can import your, your list as well. It works really, really nicely, okay? But I've already got these here. And if I look at each of these, if I click edit, we're gonna see that I've mapped them to the appropriate account. So either construction materials or in the case of rough plumbing subcontract, I have it to subcontractors, okay? So now that I've created those, and again, this takes some time, so it's not like it's just magically done, but take your time thinking about it and adding those. Let's go back to my profit and loss 2022. I have these three transactions here and let's edit them so that I'm making use of products and services. So I'm gonna click into this one. This one is for Rough Electric. And I'm gonna, instead of using this section, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna pull up Rough Electric. Now, not subcontractor, this is material. So I'm gonna click Rough Electric. And here I can put boxes and MISC Rough Electric. Here I'm gonna put 1250. Not marking this up, I'm not selling it, not yet anyways. 277 to Pew, 277 to Pew, and then I'm gonna eliminate here, okay? So my total stayed the same. Save and close that transaction. Now notice nothing's changed with my P&L. So if I go to my P&L, I'm still 5750 because I've already mapped those items to the correct spot here. I'm gonna change these ones as well. So let's do this wiring. It's gonna come down, it's gonna be rough electric. and delete this one up here, save and close. One more, this is gonna be my rough plumbing. Let's make this one subcontractor. Okay, let's just say this is, uh, the rough and sub was 3000. And maybe it's, actually, let's do materials and sub, why not? Let's say that we split it up. So this would be rough plumbing Let's say 1500 and 1500. And then we'll get rid of this. We'll put these both to the same project. So maybe your sub is giving you a broken down invoice or a broken down expense. We can do bills the exact same way, okay? Let's save and close. Now here we should expect a little bit of a change. And if I go to my summary, See, I have some going to subcontractor, some going to construction materials, but all still going to cost of goods sold. I can drill down into that. Okay, and I have my construction materials, I have my subcontractors, here's the magical part. Okay, now because I've used products and services, I can now group by product slash service, run report, and QuickBooks now gives me that summarized version. There's my rough plumbing, there's my rough plumbing subcontract, there's my rough electrical, and there's my total stage two rough structure, okay? So we're adding that element all while not impacting the P&L at all. My P&L stays nice and neat and I get that detail if I want to. So Envision, and I'll show you in a second, 7,500 transactions, right? They're all gonna go nice and neat to one or two or three accounts and then we can split them up by product and service. So let me show you that on a different set of uh, different set of books here. So in this case, I have this set of books and we're actually using, this is like more of a flipping setup. So I have this one account for all the rehab costs, this 90,000. So it looks really nice and neat on this sheet, right? Just rehab costs. I don't have, I don't have like electrical, plumbing, HVAC, cabinetry, appliances. It's just nice and neat, boom, 90,000. If I drill down into that, it's gonna show me the whole list. I can group by product slash service, run that report and look at all the detail that I get. Here's how much I spent on demo, on rough plumbing, on rough electrical, on framing, okay? And I can collapse all of these as needed. So I have my general, I got my rough structure, my exterior, my major systems, interior, 
etc. And I can see how much I spent on all, giving me my total. This is absolutely magical if you haven't been using it. Okay, so it's essential. Now, I mentioned that this is what you're gonna use to link to Builder Trend. So if you're using Builder Trend or you're thinking about it, how does this show up? This is a list of accounts that I use in my renovation business. A little bit more detailed, okay? So if you are a fan of the National Association of Home Builders, they're gonna have a list that you can use as a starting point, a little bit more detailed for you, okay? So this is, this is for like a whole home build, okay? Now, what level of detail should you use? Whatever level of detail you estimate at, okay? So if, if some of these codes, you're never gonna use them to estimate, you're never gonna use them for actuals, I don't want you to put them in your books. It really depends on what your business does and what types of cost codes you use. If you're not using a cost code, it probably should not exist within your chart of accounts. Now you'll notice I have like hardwood flooring, labor, subcontract. That's my way of separating out how much am I spending on materials, labor, and subcontract. And I'm mapping those appropriately to the various different accounts. The other thing we can do with this is in addition to external software, we can use external reporting. So I'm able to export my, um, my data from QuickBooks Online and I'm able to see my spending by those cost codes and we can compare that with our budgets as well. So it turns on all this really cool data analytics that we can then do, all of which we wouldn't really have access to if we are simply using these two categories. Okay, so if you're building anything and you're using QuickBooks Online, I need you to start embracing products and services, cost codes. You're gonna get that extra level of detail and it's extremely important to being able to do accurate job costing so that you can be more successful in invoicing your customers and uh, tracking for the future. Okay, we have a lot of information on this on our site. We have more videos coming out. We have a course fully dedicated to managing your books within QuickBooks Online. I really encourage you to check that out. All right, it's called Builder Books Academy. We go through this in so much further detail as well as all the aspects of QuickBooks that you're gonna to need to run your business, right? So we'd love for you to check that out. But I wanna hear your comments. I wanna know what questions you have about this process. I wanna know those of you who had tried it, maybe you had some issues, and I can certainly help you out with those, all right? Check out all the free resources available online at IncomeDigs.com, and I'll see you on the next video.